So to scan the neck, we can start from the pole and go down to the cervical facet of each vertebrae. What I recommend is to use a linear probe to start, which is uh, this one, a 6 to 15 megahertz, so you can have a pretty good resolution of the superficial aspect of the pole and the different ligament and muscle inserting on the skull, exactly at the occipital crest. So this horse has been lightly sedated. We can put the probe directly on the proximal aspect and dorsal aspect of the crest. If you want to see the crest a bit better on the insertion of the semispinalis muscle and the nuchal ligament, you can push a little bit forward and get exactly in the mid-axis. You can fan your probe sideways to see different anatomical elements of this insertion. And you can go also on the right side to see if there is not any asymmetric finding. On this longitudinal image, we can see from top to bottom the splenius, the semispinalis muscle, and lower back, the nuchal ligament insertion. And as we go a little bit more caudally, we can see the first aspect of the joint between the occiput and C1. So we are talking about the atlanto-occipital joint. And this joint can be seen as soon as the probe is a little bit off the midline. You can play with your probe and some angularity to see that joint. And we will make a few pictures to show you exactly the shape of that joint which is exactly there. You get a bit of a margin, which is blacker here on the edge of the bone. This is the cartilage of the occiput bulbs. So these are just here, and we can have a sharper picture as you follow the joint. So you basically can fan your probe away from the midline to follow the joint between the atlas and the occiput. We have a choice on this machine to have either a 2 to 5 megahertz wide convex probe or a kind of mini convex probe, not completely mini, but 3 to 8 megahertz, which can be very nice. Anyway, we are going to move on with this probe first. So you can see the type of image you would see here at the level of C1 to the occiput, so the atlanto occipital joint again. So this image is a little bit more um, shallow for sure because we are not using the same probe. But at the end of the day, you have a pretty decent image. The resolution to see the cartilage edges are not as nice. But when it comes to go on C1, C2, the facet here can be seen a bit more easily. And you see that gap again between C1 and C2 and the cranial edge of C1 being a little bit more, sorry, C2 being a little bit more prominent. If we move the probe exactly 45 degrees, you're gonna get just to the edge there where you can see the medulla canal. So, we know that there is a gap between these joints where there is a way more um, ease to get exactly at the edge of the medulla canal. So this is for sure a spot you don't want to uh, aim if you are injecting the joint between C1 and C2. So I come back here again, this is the joint, and I move my probe, 45 degrees angle, and I get to see the medulla canal just here at this edge. So we still are looking at the different joints and the facets by a transversal view using a large convex probe. So I was at the level of C1, C2, where we can see the medulla canal here. And I'm going to move more caudally and a little bit ventrally to check the joints one by one. So as always, the convention is to have the dorsal view to the left of the screen, the ventral view on the right side of the screen. And this is the facet joint at the level of C2, C3, which looks a bit like a small heel shaped and the light you have in between and the echogenic finding you have in between is actually the joint space with some synovial fluid. As I go down, I'm going to move caudally and see the joint space here is going to be at the level of C3, C4 and we have the same type of view with some echogenicity that gives us the margin of the joint space there. We can get to have an image which is a little bit sharper here. And as you follow more caudally again, we're going to see the ridge of the vertebrae, the transverse processes, and then again one more facet joint, 
This is C4, C5. And again, you have a small gap on the top, which gives you the, an idea of where the joint space will be. So here, caudally and cranially of every joint facet that you are evaluating. Now we get to C5, C6. C5, C6, you see that suddenly the facet shape changes a little bit and it's much wider. If you look carefully at the edge, you see almost like a second line. The second line might be the capsule which is inserting on both sides of the facet uh, opening. So this is the joint space opening here and you're going to have on the margin this small uh, line which represents the capsule. As a landmark, you can always see here at the bottom of the uh, facet uh, round, nice hypoechoic shape. This is almost an echoic here suddenly the ventral artery and the transverse process mostly to the right and more ventral to the to the joint and this if I go one step further down I'm going to see C67 C67 being a little bit darker here with the same shape rounder larger facet joint again the round shape here of the ventral artery and the transverse process so these are joints which are looking within normal we don't have so much inflammation or elevation of the capsule. The margin of the joint looks nice and smooth. And if I go even more caudally, sometimes I can see just the edge there of the ventral aspect just below the artery of the foramen where we can get some of the nerve emergence at the base of the vertebrae. Thank you for watching. For more information and videos, please visit sonosite.com backslash vedad.